am the plague doctor, and this evening I am interviewing... Ralph from San Diego. Ralph San Diego, how do you know Alexander Nikelski and the Zeitgeist Film Festival? Ali and I met a little bit over 10 years ago at Chapman University. And what is amazing about this event is it makes our friendship come full circle. We met over our love of Night of the Comet and I became her instant best friend because I have the soundtrack. What? How did you get the soundtrack? Uh, back when you can only get Night of the Comet from third parties, I got it from eBay and whoever it was who sold it to me included a copy of the soundtrack, which I have played to death. And I see you have an awesome BIM sticker. Did Allie introduce you to the Apple? Actually, she did. Allie and I, we, we introduced each other to a lot of different movies. If I'm not mistaken, I introduced her to Suburbia. So again, a lot of things come full circle. Do you have a BIM dance for me? I'm straight, I don't. <laughs> I well, can try. You can do that. Two 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 that. Okay, I like that. You yeah. Part of the moment. Exactly. Um, have you met Catherine Mary Stewart? I haven't met Catherine yet. I have met Kelly and Kelly is a delight, but I would love to meet Catherine. Um, I love her in the Apple Night of the Comet and uh, a movie that I should not have watched as a kid, but I did Mischief. Mischief? I don't think even I've seen that. And I'm a What's Mischief about? Well, Mischief is one of those coming of age tales uh, about uh, two guys and they're they're a little amorous for the women. And uh, it also featured my height, my like crush of like my youth, Kelly Preston. Ooh. Now, a little bit. Have you seen Weekend at Bernie? Of course. Who's not seen that movie? Right. Uh, what I love about Weekend at Bernie's is basically it's a more hilarious a uh, tale of the trouble with Harry. Right? Yeah. It's so funny. Like, yeah. the whole setup, like, oh, we, we're two schmucks. Right, right. I was amazed when I found out that Bernie was uh, that psychotic doctor in Friday the 13th Part 7 who was gaslighting Lar Park Lincoln. It was just, it was insane. I, insane. And it's just so funny. And it goes, like, perfect plot. Simple, exactly. contained, Exactly. It's a hilarious, it's a hilarious movie. And it's even more hilarious that they made a sequel. My dad actually does the dance for Weekend at Bernie's Tale. Okay, you have to meet CMS. She is so nice. I would love to. I would love to. Go into the restricted area. Stay out. But do you like the comment? The comment's good. Stay out of the restricted area. Yeah. Wait, wait. Uh, only people who have a death wish. I do. <laughs> well, as long as you dance, you got the bend sticker, you got to dance. Oh, oh, what dance? Yep, okay, she's allowed in. It's the restricted area. Good evening, I am the plague doctor. And this evening, I am with Jaime. Yes, how you doing? Look at him, he is in full action with Night of the Comic T-shirt. Please tell me, what is your experience with this movie and how did you hear about it and your first experience with Night of the Comic? My first experience was, it was probably watching on HBO one night, like in the 1980s. I absolutely loved it and I've been a fan ever since. Oh my gosh, what is your, biggest memory of this movie um honestly it's gonna be probably kelly maroney dancing in lingerie in the mall so it, it is kind of dark but i was a kid when i watched this the first time so well i get it that would still be my favorite moment at this time <laughs> my favorite too right yes i i feel you i feel you and how did you hear about the zeitgeist film festival well i follow the of the actresses from the movie and they promoted it and I signed up and I came down to check it out. Came all the way down from Arizona for it. No, I'm from Arizona. Oh Play dance dancers so from sorry. Surprise, Arizona. Where are you from? I'm from Phoenix. Phoenix area. Are you born and raised? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where are you originally from? Uh, New Mexico. New Mexico? Yeah. I am originally from New Mexico. Oh, my God. Where? I'm from, sorry. Where? I, I'm so sorry. A place called Carlsbad. Oh, so that's 
Southern! New Mexico. I'm from Albuquerque. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, it's better than Carl's bad. Oh, yeah, no, they're both equally bad. But that's okay. It's neither here nor there. That's so I see you there. really expanded your horizons and went to Arizona. Absolutely. I went, you know, a little to the left. Okay. Well, where did you find this shirt? This is an absolutely beautiful shirt. I found it online on the Night of the Comet fan site. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Um, Have you met... Catherine Mary Stewart. I've actually had the fortune of meeting her a couple different times, so yes, I have met her. She's pretty awesome, huh? She is very awesome. Is she not just super sweet? Like, oh my goodness. She is everything you would imagine and more. Okay. Now, have you watched Weekend at Bernie's? Well, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty typical. That's my typical go-to. If you don't like Weekend at Bernie's, we can't be friends. No, if you don't like the apple, we can't be friends. Oh my God, do you have a BIM sticker? Oh, oh come on, come on. It's not on me. Okay, we have to cut this interview right now. <laughs> I'm Ralph here from Huntington Beach, and we're at the Night of the Comets screening. I'm here with Ken, Brian, and Diana. Ken, you've watched this movie on so many different formats. Tell me your Night of the Comet story and what brought you to the movie and the legacy of how many different formats you've owned it on? Okay, I've owned it on Beta, VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, and now Blu-ray. And I upload to Voodoo just in case. You gotta do that, you gotta <laughs> do that. And the Blu-ray, the special features, that's amazing, that, that's so amazing. Brian, what do you have to say about that? I am speechless and I'm just happy to be here. Me too, me too. Diana, what do you think? It makes me want to do the BIM. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So here we are nearly 40 years after the movie has been made. It makes us all feel old. But did you think when you watched this movie as a, as a little kid that it would still have this impact and it's still very socially relevant? Uh, it's very relevant. I mean, like, um, you can watch this movie, what you said, 40 years it's been out? Uh, you're probably gonna laugh at this, spoiler alert. Uh, I didn't realize who DMK was until I saw the license plate at the end of the movie. I was. Yeah, Danny Mason Keener with that high score that he attained in the movie Carrie. Excuse me, Christine. I'm speechless and I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Diana, did you think that this would bring in such an audience for people that just love this movie nearly 40 years later? Absolutely. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's a great movie. It is. It is. It is. And let's not forget about what the other movies that, that, you know, Kelly and Catherine have done. What did you think of, say, The Apple or Chopping Mall? Okay, The Apple, the trailer scared me because I was, I think it was eight when it came out. Um, and you said the other one. Um, Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall. That's, that's okay. See, that's the great thing about 80s horror is that it's a well that you can just pull, keep pulling movies out of. You can find stuff that you just never, ever heard of. Diana, what do you think? Uh, um, I love The Bim. I love Weekend at Bernie's. If you don't like that movie, we can't be friends. From what I heard, that's kind of like a family tradition in your home. Oh, every day we quote that movie. Every single day. That's definitely a movie that you want to quote. Now, something that I really like about Night of the Comet that not too many people talk about is the soundtrack. It really made an impact on me. It's so authentically 80s. Ken, does the soundtrack hold any memories for you? Uh, especially in the radio scene where um, Regina, and, um, Samantha is playing all the songs. And as she's doing her dialogue saying, and the legal drink age is not 10, but you'll need an ID, let's be real and you hear the soundtrack in the back, you just like sit there just jam into it. It was cool. Exactly, exactly. And you know, nobody is the phone company anymore. So, Diana, right? what did you think about the soundtrack? Um, you know what? I love it. Not to, not to say my age, but I was born in the 80s. Same here. I was born in 1980. So Me for too. this movie Me to too. still go and the music, like how impactful is that? I just have to say that's unbelievable. And the whole world is celebrating Night of the Comet tonight. Good evening. This is the Plague Doctor, and I am with Catherine Mary Stewart. And I'm just Ralph. And Ralph and and Tom Eberhardt. Ooh, the writer and the director. Yes. Is this is awesome. Not on. There's no mic going on. 
we need to the red light. Oh, and the late arrival. Oh, and green light. Hey. What is your name? The light. No. I am starting the show. I want to know how you taught him golf with Night of the Comet. Um, let's see. I auditioned. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I auditioned for it. I auditioned with somebody else. It wasn't Kelly. It was somebody who was like... For our Nancy in, in Nightmare on Elm Street. She got the franchise. They the girls we wanted at all. Oh, there you go. So they ended up... You're right. So I was somebody who was a sort of darker haired and all that other stuff. And I, when I ended up getting the job, I was like, oh, excellent, I'll be with what, whoever, what, Heather, whatever her name was. And uh, uh, Wayne Camp, sorry, I don't, I, ooh, boy. What was the I script like? Be, You're like, I'm all about this. Like, I was so all about the script because at that, up to that point, I was playing kind of the girl next door and all, because that's sort of what I look like. But Reggie is way more me than that. So I was uh, thrilled to be able to play Reggie. What about you? How did you get involved with this project? I auditioned for it. <laughs> oh, this is There's, more to this There's more to the story than that. Um, um, it, it is true, though, that I, Kathy and I never auditioned together, um, which is odd because I think it worked out pretty well, but that's taking a lot. They would never take a chance like that these days. It's like they'd, ha they'd put us in a room and say, Make sure they really get along. Is there any chemistry? I just don't know. Yeah, but now they, they just went, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> and how did you come up with this story and all together movie contract? It all started in 1982. Ooh, I won't tell you how old I was, but 1982. I will tell you the whole story. It takes about 35 minutes to tell in detail. No, I was doing these like weird uh, after school special things for PBS and I wanted to write a feature. I'd never, well, I'd done one feature, but I don't talk about it. And I wanted to do another one, hopefully it would come out better. So I sat down with these two 13 year olds that were in this after school special, like these two. And I said, what would you do if you woke up one morning and everybody was gone and it was just you in LA and they just took off and there was there was no lament about anything no lament over lost parents or anything it was just like all the things they could do and all the fun they could have and I said well what if there were bad guys around and uh, there are no police no no army and they said we just get guns and these girls had never touched a gun in their life I'm like Arizona <laughs> Excuse me, that was the genesis of the story. So I said, how can I make this empty story, empty city uh, story different? And that was it, to have fun. Okay, so to you, what does the soundtrack mean to you? That's what we've been talking about. What does that soundtrack mean to you? Why did, why did that connect to you? Well, the soundtrack to me is just so authentically 80s, and it really... It brings me back into the world of Night of, the, of Night of the Comet with Samantha driving down the street and Regina and Hector having their moment inside the radio station. And I mean, despite all the 80s, you know, synth pop songs that were on there, honestly, the song that means the most to me is Learn to Love Again. To see um, Samantha go off with Danny Mason Keener, you know, from Christine, and just to see you and the kids and Hector throwing the football. <laughs> That, I mean, I, I will say during some dark times, that song really, really lifted me up. However, you know, unbelievable and the whole world is celebrating with the opening montage. It's just, I'm a soundtrack person and the soundtrack brings me into it. And it's just like, if I had, you know, Samantha and Regina on my side, like we could conquer the world, we could conquer the pandemic. And it's just such an honor to be with you guys. Samantha. It's just, it's just such an honor to be, with my heroes. We can conquer anything you at this can conquer point. conquer anything with Samantha and Regina. So what does this movie mean to you now 
know, especially post-COVID, and people show up to you so many years later after this film has made. Has been made. Well, it's 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 sort of crazy that we're in this COVID period, which kind of reflects what Night of the Comet was all about, which is wild. And the fact that it has had sort of the sustainability that it has over all these years and that there are so many people that still love this movie um, and uh, it means so much to them. It's, it's something that we never expected going into it. Um, but I have to say, while we shot, it was truly a labor of love. We all got along. There was incredible um, um, camaraderie. And I think that that is reflected in the film itself. And that probably contributes to why it's lasted as long as it has. And so the first time you read the script, you were like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Give me Reggie. Yeah. I got her. I got that Reg. What? <laughs> so what does this movie mean to you today? All these people show up for this movie, especially post COVID. Oh, not oh. me. No, 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 he wanders. He, he wanders. No, he wanders and he's got a yes. Tom, go ahead. <laughs> if you look at the advertising plug for this movie, it says it was the last thing on earth they ever expected. And this, in fact, is the last thing on earth we ever expected when we were making this movie. Yeah, well, you know, it's it just the fact that people are just talking about it and, rem and remembering it. That's the thing. <laughs> That's really weird. And what about you, Kelly? What does this movie mean to you today, especially post-COVID? Well, um, we can survive anything. I mean, that's that's that. Uh, it was the last thing on earth we ever expected to get COVID, you know. And and here we are. And I think that at such a that people that love this movie have picked up so much on all the heart that we put into it. I feel like they really get us. I think that's the key word, heart. I think yeah. that's the number one go-to when you're watching a film. You can see the heart of a film. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really touching. Everybody has a personal story about how they connect to Night of the Comet, and it's so touching, you know. That's so many years later. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but it's, it, it means to hear that something you did means something to other people, and, you know, you're a part of their life. You guys. part of your life I mean, you were part of their life and that's the whole point of acting is we do this to connect and so we we did it <laughs> we did it yeah. mission mission accomplished yeah. awesome. we did it. <laughs> that's the plague doctor coming to you it's enough to be here with CMS Woo. CMS CMS <laughs> <laughs> We're having a great time here. Nice Yay. Guys Film Festival. CMS, tell me. Oh. I'm a part of what? the Side Guys Film Festival with Ali Nikolsky. I, I can't hear what you're saying over that mask. I'm become a part of the Zeitgeist Film Festival. Part of the Zeitgeist Film Festival with Ali Nikelski. How did this all come to be? How how did she reach out? How did you become a part of this awesome event? Um, I I think Ali approached me. I I'm trying to remember initially what happened, yeah. but um, uh, yeah, she approached me about this film festival. I was like. Yeah, absolutely. Are and you kidding me? Like, I love this. I love what it's about. Is, well, I love the idea. Yeah, she she gave me her whole background, her whole educational background. That's my and sister. And I was like, this is an authentic fan. She was like, Night of the Comet is like my favorite movie ever. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm there, baby. And um, she's she, she offered to fly me out to Los Angeles, and I was like. Absolutely, an excuse to fly out to LA. And look at this. It's just this incredible. Is, it's incredible. Like, look at all these people watching your film oh, Night in the Comet right now. People are watching it right now. Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh. 
I just want to talk a little bit about a couple of your movies. Okay. One, The Apple. If you haven't seen The Apple, you don't even know what you're missing. It's the BIM hour. Do you know, do you know any BIM dances? Oh, no. Um, it's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, It's the BIM hour. The extras were like, doing whatever. Yeah, you now, do the BIM. Now, was that all original singing? Did you sing all those songs yourself? No, stop. You didn't sing no. You didn't I, sing I, the I, bullshit. I, I know. I don't okay. believe it. I don't. I tell me. Tell me. Because, it, I mean, they found this wonderful woman who, who I, I think that her voice really matched mine. Okay. So we ended up, uh, so all the people in the Apple were like professional singers rock and rollers and a band and all this and, and then there was me I was this little uh, in London England I was this little um, theater student and they said can you sing this sure and so they tried to get me to sing it and, and it, I, I thought it was your voice I didn't have the chops seriously I, th I, I sincerely to this day think it's you it's not you okay I'm uh, you know if you think it's me it's me it sounds phenomenal Okay, Thank but you. kudos to your your singer. Mary what, do, Highland is her name. Mary Highland. Okay. She was lovely. She came and recorded in London, and I by that time I knew all the lyrics back and forth. So and did you just lip sing it? What's that? Did you just lip sing it? Was it all I had to lip sync, but but, but you knew all the choreography. Oh yeah, I mean for sure. I, I by that time it was like kismet you know I knew what I was doing and she she had a great voice that really matched mine so it all worked out great did you have a favorite particular song from the Apple um, I think the romantic song where with Alfie Alfie where are you now do you ever see your face again because I, I just am a romantic at heart I and, feel you yeah 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 I feel you on that and I was just standing there crying. And, oh, yeah, it was wonderful. Oh my goodness, I, was, I love that. I mean, I would say it was a dream come true, except I love the lights. I, we don't know what what the lights, but we're just going with it. I, I would say you're you're a star. The lights just shine on. I think somebody's like leaning against something. Don't you think? <laughs> leaning against a light switch. I think it's um, you. It was, uh, I would say it was a dream come true doing The Apple because it was the very first movie I did. But I was it really the first movie? Very first. I did not know that. I was living in London, England as a day. I was training as a dancer. Seriously? What kind, like a ballet dance? Jazz, but that was primarily jazz, but I was. That was um, your first movie? Yeah. I am learning, the play doctor is learning facts right now about CMS. Your first film. Um, yeah. Did you have to audition for that? Well, I did. I, I actually originally auditioned as a dancer because it's a rock musical. And they, the director pulled me out of the... This crap. I know. Lights, sorry. Lights are coming and going. Just... Um, um, pulled me out of the group and said he, he thought I looked right for the lead role. And um, uh, he said, do you act? I'm like, no. And he said, do you sing? I'm like, sure. <laughs> And so I auditioned, and within like a couple of days, I had the lead role in this. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, you are phenomenal. We watch it all the time. We do the BIM hour sticker. This is the BIM sticker. Yeah. Um, such a great movie. Like the music, like it reminds me a lot of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Right. Well, it, it had that effect on audiences as well. I mean, people would, the first the first time I heard that it was sort of this cult thing was probably like 25 years ago. Somebody called me up out of the blue and said, did you know that the Apple was this cult thing? And they're playing it in all these different weird theaters and like all the biggest cities in the States. And I'm like, are you crazy, really? So my husband and I, it was screening in New York. So he and I went to the screening and the audience was full people dressed in costume and just like yelling Rocky. at the, you know, at the screen, uh, reciting. Did people recognize you? They did not. So is that more rewarding to you? Like, I can live a normal life yet be like in this cult I film. I was just, well, I was, in a way, I was glad that they didn't recognize me, but I was glad, I don't know. 
like yes and no it was just so bizarre somehow yeah. but um but what was even more bizarre was that it had become that you know this sort of rocky horror picture yeah show. no that's what i listen to. i hear rocky horror in this i see it i feel it i have a tattoo from rocky horror picture show because that that movie felt to me so i can understand how the apple impact other people had that like kind that. of impact but um significant i uh, well it's your work is significant <laughs> it's kind of look at people I know people are here for you Kelly and Tom. Wow. What's so incredible about this is that Tom Everhart's here, the director. Um, Arthur Albert, the DP. Ivan Roth, who played Willie the Box Boy. Isn't the shots director here? Uh, oh, shots, 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 shots. Uh, I think the shots okay. director. That's what my sister told me. Oh, is that right? So I'm my sister on that one. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and and um, the, the producer, Andy Lane, is here. It's really, we haven't seen each other for so Kelly and I have stayed in touch all these years, but otherwise, it's like, um, it's an incredible reunion, so. Well, and you and Kelly are like East Coast, West Coast, right? And you still keep in touch. We do. I come out to LA as often as I can, so uh, yeah. Um, I, and we always see each other when I can do that. Okay, to change, to, to change gear a little bit, although no. Weekend at Bernie's. If you don't like this film, we can't be friends. It's Weekend at Bernie's, you guys. I love the tea. You get so sexy. Now, now, tell me, when you read Weekend at Bernie's, what did you think? <laughs> were you like, sign me up? Or were you like, this is batshit crazy? I thought it was batshit crazy. I was like, what, this is about a dead guy who's being like yeah, used all over the place? dragged behind a boat. I mean, I remember reading the scene where he's dragging behind the boat and hits the buoys and stuff like that. And that gets a lot of laughs to this day. We showed it to our friends. And that was the hardest part they laughed at was him behind the boat. And to me, it was like, this is horrible. But what attracted me to it was the fact that it was something that I hadn't done before. So I was like, and plus I knew it was Ted Kotcheff is this incredible director and uh, Jonathan Silverman and McCarthy and I was like, yeah, I should be, I, if I can, be a part of this. And, but what astonished me the most was that that scene that I was like, oh my God, was like the biggest laugh. In the was movie. it really? And that's the funny scene. I was like, I don't know, I am completely out of touch here. I'm sorry, folks. I don't think you understand, but this is such a move, like family movie for me. Like my sister is literally Andrew McCarthy from that film, and I am Jonathan Silverman. I'm like, I would stay outside all weekend, and my sister's like, house guest. <laughs> to this day, like that is our family movie. We quote it every single day. Um, what was it like working with Jonathan, Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy? Well, a couple of dolls, that's all yeah. I can say. Yeah, just no, honest. they worked their asses off this movie. They were like in every single scene, for sure. And, and every once in a while, I would sort of come in and I, I'd be so excited to just be in the movie that I was like, who? <laughs> yeah, it was sweet, except they were like exhausted. So they really? were like, you're way too energetic for us right now. But we had the best time. Because we were watching it. And like, yeah, I'm bringing my wife into this, Amy. We're watching. And it's like the part where you're like, after the lighthouse on the beach. Oh, and then his body comes scene. up. And Amy's like dying of laughter. He's like, no, nah, this is all wrong. Like, we were dying of laughter. Oh, my God. What a great I movie. I think that was my favorite scene. I, I remember doing the whole lighthouse scene. And, and Jonathan's just a doll. He's just a doll. Yeah, we were laughing, and, and also a lot of the stuff he was saying as he, you know, I, I'm like, are you okay? And he, it was improvised and whatnot. And um, he made me laugh so hard, and Ted Kotcheff, the director, was like, oh my God, you've got the greatest laugh. And it was it's never been a problem for me to just laugh. Crying, it's harder for me to cry. But laughing, and um, so that was really super fun. And then, um, 
watching the scene afterwards where we're making out and I don't notice anything and I'm like, it's this is this is whatever it is, this is good for me too. And and he pulls me out and I go, oh and when you look at it and with the, with Bernie drifting in and out in the background. So now that was not obviously not that scene, but for the most part that was really him, right? It was a practical like that was him, right? During the whole movie or was it or was it um a, a dummy? I it thought it was back and, it went back and forth. Okay. But they had a pretty good dummy likeness for sure. Right. But I mean, well, it was him, right? A lot of him. Oh, for sure. Right? I mean, he, they don't do nowadays. And I think that's what sets those movies apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like instead of CGI and stuff like that. He really? was going all out. But you have to understand also, it's sort of like uh, I was going to say like Grig in um in the last Starfighter was just covered in rubber prosthetics okay and to create a character with that kind of restricting stuff on your face is very very hard you have to really uh, figure out how to work the prosthetics or whatever and same with playing a dead guy you have to figure out how to create a character that is watchable um, being dead right and that is like the symbol of a really good actor i love it like to me the whole premise the plot like these two guys are like two schmucks that's us we need this guy around but polly's like i just want this guy dead <laughs> so that whole circle like it's like the perfect plot right right right, right. Oh, yeah. love it love it love it yes life is good life is good here with cms night of the comet what else do you need in life Nothing. I'm very fortunate. Life is good. Good evening. I am the plague doctor, and this evening I am interviewing Amy. Amy Peterson. How do I know that? I'm a plague doctor. This evening, please, can you tell me, Amy, what inspired your outfit? Captain Mary Stewart's character in the apple. Ooh, and what do you love about the apple? I like that it's musical. I like that it's distilled. They wear stickers on their heads. Ooh, that is a BIM sticker, am I correct? You're correct, and you are wearing one as well. I am. Can you show me a few dance moves from the apple? Ooh, we got the shoulder move. Oh. Folks, it does not get any better than this. This is literally the BIM hour. Don't lose your sticker. You might get a fine. Okay. You got it right there. Um... Tell me about Weekend at Bernie's and what that movie means to you. Weekend at Bernie's uh, means a lot to me. Why is that? <laughs> because I can relate to the characters. Which characters? Uh, the two main characters. One is very uptight. Oh, that would be me, a.k.a. Jonathan Silverman and... And the other character is uh, Andrew McCarthy, free spirited, aka my sister. Okay, and what else about this movie? It's funny. You just like it. Do you have any particular favorite scene or lines from this movie? I like a lot of lines from the movie. Okay, can you give me one? We're house guests. We're house guests. We just come in. Okay. Um, any other favorite lines from this movie? It's too hot for that shit. Okay, I get it. 